स्वात्मदर्शनम् ईशदर्शनम् स्वात्मरूपतः while the verse 23 took up the question, what are these Sat and Chit? Are they different? And the answer was given, they are one. These two verses which we sang now, to take up, take up the question, what are God and man? By man is meant any living being, women, all living beings. Jiva. What are God and man? Are they different? Are they one? And the answer here too is, they are one, but in erroneous perception, they seem to be two. In Shankara's language, there is, let me introduce two Sanskrit words for you, pretty simple. Right seeing is Samyak Darshana. This expression, Samyak Darshana, is uh, one of the expressions very dear to Adi Shankara. He uses that expression in uh, his commentaries on Gita, on Upanishad, at places, at very critical places. Incidentally, Samyak Darshana is a, is a much chosen phrase in Buddhism too. Buddha also used that, see rightly. In right seeing, your, your sorrow will vanish. Your sorrow is in wrong seeing, with attachment, with pride, with bias, with prejudice, with hidden self-interest, with some ulterior motives, da da da. You and I have many things. And then we say this world is so cruel, where is justice in this world and so on. You know, let me tell you a little quick story. You know, we don't prepare but suddenly we remember something. I believe in a small town there was a husband and a wife. The husband said to his wife that Sunday morning, please get a hammer from the neighbor. I need to do some fixing work. The lady went to the opposite neighbor and <clears throat> the neighbor refused. No, we don't give our hammer to anybody. She came back. The husband said, go to the right side neighbor. And over there, that there was an hammer hanging on the wall. But that neighbor said, we don't keep any hammer in our home. It was a little embarrassing for this lady to say, I see that hammer here. She said, okay, came back. She went to the left side neighbor. There also he gave some excuse, some name excuse. Somehow no neighbor gave a simple hammer. You know, don't ask me which country it is and so somewhere. But the last part of the story is interesting. When the wife finally said, Dear, nobody is giving to us. They are all telling. Somebody says, I am using it and so on. Nobody is giving. The husband said, Didn't I tell you other day, we are in a very selfish neighborhood. All neighbors are very selfish here. And then he said, Okay, let us use our own hammer. <laughs> This morning, let us use our own hammer, you know. So think of him. So, you and I could have that kind of consciousness. Then, there is asamyak darshana. When the mind is impure, there is, samyak means right and asamyak means not right. Erroneous perception. And Shankara says in various commentaries of his, the whole purpose and the only purpose of all the Upanishads is to eliminate erroneous seeing and to bless you with right seeing. Now, as it bears on these two verses, there is God, there is individual, and in erroneous perception, God is all-powerful. God has the form of Vishnu or Shiva or Devi or Ganesha or Father in Heaven or Allah and in various faiths. That is Vesha. Vesha means how he appears. And Dhi means knowledge. God is Sarvajna. He is omniscient, <coughs> omniscient, knowing all. Whereas Jiva is 
with their limited, the bodily, mentally, knowledge-wise limited. In terms of the outer appearance, there is a sea of difference. But Satsvabhavata, if you purify your mind and you are able to scratch the surface and go deeper, you will find that behind and beneath all these appearances, the truth, Sat is the pure existence, is the same in all. The whole sea also is water, a single wave also is water. All this space also is space and if you have a pot here, the pot space and the hall space are just space. When you move the pot, space doesn't move. Pot and space have a very strange relationship. You talk of space in the pot, you even lift a pot and say this pot has more space than that pot. But actually it's, the pot doesn't hold space as though captive. If you move the pot, space remains. In fact, space is difficult to think about space, Akasha Tattva. Likewise, Jiva and Ishvara are same Sat Chit Tattva and they are one. It's like a mother is watching a play at the school and there is a villain and there is a hero. The villain tries his best to kill the hero, but the hero finally somehow manages to finish off the, the villain falls dead at the end of some story, some play. <coughs> and the mother watching the play knows both are her sons only. Veshataha, one is villain, another is hero. And one is, one is very, you know, wicked, other one is noble. But if you remove that role playing, after they come down, the mother of the two boys or the two girls goes and hugs both of them and says to each of them, you did so well, you performed so well. Both of them are one to that mother, playing different roles. So, Ramana's submission here is, Vastu, the truth is one. And as the second verse which we read said, Vesha Hanataha. Hana means giving up. If one were to see it without the Vesha, the appearance coming in the way, then one not only understands what God is, one also sees what oneself is. Because they are both one. Vesha Hanataha Swatma Darshanam. If you are to know God, in the ultimate form, right away, not as another step or another exercise, you will know what you are. This is a Dvaitic statement. Dvaitis and Vishishta Dvaitis have some difficulty with it. But that is all exposure. Once you are guided properly by competent teachers, you will find this is also a highly appealing and very tenable position. And countless are the examples in the physical world also where appearance takes a back seat. There was a time till about 20, how many, maybe, yeah, maybe about a hundred years ago, till that time nobody questioned the relative nature of time. Nobody questioned the relative nature of space. Then statements came, time slows down. Time speeds up, very hard to even imagine. Then space is curved, a revelation was made. Today you and I understand, yeah, yeah, that's true. Space and time are not two separate things, they are a continuum. Like this, there are mind-blowing situations, you know, positions in science. Likewise, in, the, in philosophy, Jiva and Ishvara are not two different principles, they are one. Be patient, bear with the teachers. Do not brush aside Advaita saying this is over intellectualism and this is not practical. To call the world as illusion is such an insult to God's creation, etc. No, that is half-baked statements. If you don't like Advaita, 
you know. Among your brothers and sisters, some may not like Advaita. God bless them, you also wish them well. Let them take a philosophy which brings out the nobility in them. That is finally important to be a good human being. If somebody believes in dualism, duality, and in that dualistic teaching is more loving, more caring, more service-minded, more patient, more forbearing, wonderful, why not? So we need not make a big issue that others should believe the same philosophy as we do. No need. But it is not, uh, it's not fair to say this is wrong and that is right, who knows. You and I in modern times are least qualified to stand in judgment against Shankara, Ramanuja and Madhva. Therefore I personally respect all the three great Acharyas and I come to know how Madhva Acharya or these days Iskon, Prabhupada, right? How he interprets some Gita Shloka which may be very different from Shankara Sadvaita. I feel very amused and say, oh, this is also another angle of view. Very good. But I, I am happy with Shankara's interpretation. So, Isha Darshanam, God Realization and Swatma Darshanam, Self Realization are not two, they are one. This is again the Advaitic statement. No God, automatically you know yourself. Know your own true nature, automatically you know God. Because God in His purest form, in His true nature, is no different from you, every one of you, every one of us, in our true nature. The wide gap, the wide difference is when there are concepts about God and there are concepts about who we are. Between the two bundles of concepts, there is tremendous opposition, conflict, contradiction. Remove the concepts. In the West there was some thinker in Western psychology and philosophy. He was known for a certain word, university people would know. Deconstruction. Deconstruct. I have not read much about it. I forgot the author's name also. Does anybody remember? There is some great professor who coined that expression. And then somebody wrote a book, Deconstruction in Western Philosophy and in Vedanta. Vedanta also, you and I, you know, deconstruct. Deconstruct means remove notions, concepts, ideas, see oneself as one is. Then there is oneness. So, I go for a short break now, questions and answers. Then there are five more comments, five more shlokas. So we begin with them. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you have discussed in four shlokas, yes. Is it not to be careful, Gita, Lord says, Mamma Ivan? Yeah, thank you for saying it. Yeah. Mamma Ivan show Jiva Loki, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. So if you take it literally, well said, that's what Ramanuja Acharya does. Yeah. Ramanuja Acharya says, you know, Ramanuja Acharya's philosophy, Vishishta Advaita, it's called Sri Vaishnavism. Whereas Madhva Acharya's is called Vaishnavism. And then there are many other schools, you know. So, Sri Ramanuja Acharya, who we believe came in the 10th century, Shankara came in 8th century AD, and Madhva Acharya came in 12th century AD. You and I sometimes wish they had come together and sorted out this. <laughs> but <laughs> if wishes were horses, beggars would ride them, they just see. <laughs> but they came at different times and apparently by the time Ramanuja came, there was no proper person to you know, defend and explain Advaita. So it was just thrown by the roadside by Ramanuja. When Madhva Acharya came, there was neither a competent scholar of Dvaita, sorry, Dvaita, nor of Vishishta Dvaita. So Madhva Acharya was victorious. Everywhere he went and defeated scholars. So there is Shankara Digvijaya, there is a story, book. Ramanuja Digvijaya, how he went around the country and 
everybody, after some arguments, they surrendered, yeah, you are right. Madhva Acharya, Madhva Digvijaya also is there, right. How we wish we they had, you know, met each other. But uh, that you can't wish. So you are right, thank you. Mama Eva Ansha, Ramanuja takes it literally. Look here, Lord Krishna is saying, a part of me becomes the jiva. Mama eva amshaha jiva loke jiva bhutaha sanatana. Jiva also is eternal, doesn't die. Ishwara also doesn't die. Ishwara is the whole, jiva is part, is the literal meaning. Now how does Shankara handle it? He says, look, it's like this. It is like saying pot space. You have a kumbha, you have a ghata. Ghata capital. Gada. Gada, gada. So, inside a pot, you have space. So, in a manner of saying, you may say this is part and the other is whole. But actually, space is continuous and a pot doesn't create a division. You build a house with five rooms, 